we are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate World and, and beyond. beyond. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. Quick sprints, take the disc briskly, sunshine glints off my frisbee, crisply knows how it goes with the sand between our toes. We got both of the pivots and all of the throws. Got to hold the disc and move it at the right time. When you flick your wrist and you're feeling sublime, compose your throws, not discuss fluttery tricks from the brick and your biscuits buttery. Feel the spirit, stretch every sinew, stream in courage, yeah, we continue. Take my hand, yeah, come with me. From the disc to the sand, to the beach, to the sea. There's magic in the air. All you have to do is catch it. EBUCC 2022. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Praia da Rocha, Portimao, Portugal. The action in the Algarve continuing here at EBUCC, the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships. It's another glorious morning in Portugal and we're starting with some mixed division action with LUC from Portugal up against Enzonis Rostock from Germany. It's Benji Reis back in the booth on a very bright Portuguese morning joined by someone who's going to brighten up my day even further and a Pendlebury. Oh Benji you're too kind. Well it is indeed another cloudless sky the sun just having risen about an hour or so ago here in Portugal. It's a, a much cooler start to the morning just 18 degrees Celsius local weather and a much less blustery day only eight kilometer mile an hour Malaya, mile an hour eight kilometer an hour winds to get us started but we're sure to see those pick up it looks like perfect conditions for paddle boarding out on the ocean today but beach ultimate is the name of the game of course as we day two of the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships. And in the mixed division, it's all about those final couple games to secure your spot, either at the top of a pool in order to advance straight into the championship bracket, or to play out for those pre-quarter final spots to give yourself a chance at the top spots still. And these two teams will be fighting for it. We have, of course, action from mixed pool B. Enzonis Rostock have yet to get a win on the board. They've had four losses for the four games they've played. And look, LUC from Portugal, sort of sitting in the middle of the standings, second and third in the pool, Chuck and Kuhufum Orebro, but Bifar at the top and Wonder Team in fifth position. So the way this works is if LUC win, they've got a... Uh They've got a spot secured in the uh, in the pre-quarter to go into the 90-16 bracket. Uh, if they if Enzonis Rostock were to pull the upset here and grab their first win, we'd get some nice three-way tie shenanigans to work out who's going into those pre-quarters and who's going straight into the 17 to 24 bracket. So, Rostock, of course, being a coastal part of Germany. 
Not really something that the Germans are known for in terms of, you know, the stereotypes we give them, Benji, is, is being up on the coast. They do have a, quite a lot of coastline, though. But, of course, the Portuguese are very used to the beach surface. Veterans amongst their players, including Mr. Bula himself. I mean, I'm assuming you mean Patrick van der Valk, but he hasn't filled in his player survey, so I have no idea who he is. No, no idea who he is. No. Definitely not, not as important as Sofia. <laughs> no, that is... That is true, yes. No, we love we love Patrick, of course. He's put so much work into developing Beach Ultimate over the years, and it's always nice to see him strut him stuff out here on the field. LEC Port pulling to end zone is Rostock, and we are underway here. And day two of EBUCC. That one coming underneath. Oh, wow, sticking that one under really tight pressure. Benzine goes back into the backfield. Good force, keeping very active. Bid comes in, but doesn't get there. Now here's the deep shot. Benzine looking to stretch it, not quite in the end zone just yet. Players flooding for support, and it's a little bit behind. Well, after catching so many under duress with the hot pressure of LUC, Enzo's Rostock end up having an unforced error in the end zone. Got a brief stoppage here, but I'm not sure what for. Uh, have we got a gender mismatch? Well, we have. So evidently... So I think uh, end zone is Rostock chose the gender for the first point and then you alter every after that first point and every two points after that. And uh, clearly there's been a miscommunication and a communication breakdown somewhere because that's not how it looked on the field. So we're going to start that whole thing again like it never happened. We are. It's a bizarre one. Although if you remember your history books, the first live stream game we had in Europe that had this particular issue was the final point of the European Ultimate Club, no, not Club Championships, oh, just normal championships with nations, with... Uh, Great Britain, who the face on Karen Kwok when she realised what had happened. No, why am I being marked by Gael Ancelin? <laughs> That's all right. There'll be a mismatch house. There's an awesome gender. I'm not sure I like the calling it a mismatch. Yes, I was like, it's a mismatch in the sense that they are not the same gender. But either way, we are going to restart this one. And that ball is going to sail out of bounds, so we'll be brought in from the brick mark. Nice little full start there. Indeed, and Corin Tupling there with the pull. Actually, originally from the from Edinburgh, having played for a couple of UK teams. She's now relocated, living in Lisbon. Lucky lady. Worst places to move to, I think. Well, I've not yet managed to make it to Lisbon. Shockingly, I haven't tagged a trip there on the end of this one because it's not too far away. So, home sand advantage to the team wearing white. Benzine coming underneath. Here's Wilker towards the end zone. Oh, it is macked, but couldn't be collected at the second attempt by Boss. Well, sort of like an action replay. That one was uh, a bit smoother in terms of the flow. But another just... Same result of the yes. turnover in the end zone. Straight up error. So, LEC looking to stretch it. First point going into the end zone. The layout never really going to get there, but you love the hustle. Oh, Fabio Pinto just showboating for us a little bit. I mean, you're on the beach. Why the hell not? Sneaking that one through to Benzine and dumping it off. Now resetting around the back. Benzine turns, looks downfield, has an option open on the far sideline. That is Pauline Boss. Boss taking the reset back to Benzine. His pole. Pole shooting towards the end zone, coming back towards it. Boss is going to score the games and the day's first point here. Yeah, you can see the effort from Gomez trying to lay out, but the separation was good. I almost thought for a minute he wasn't going to throw that. 
There's the replay of the previous turnover, and you know the bit. It's not guessing there, but again, love the endeavour. And this time, the deep shot was on the money from Enzonis Rostock. So, taking a one-nil lead here, just under five minutes gone. Slightly shorter games on the beach than perhaps you're used to on grass. Uh, score cap at 13 rather than 15 and 45 minutes the time cap comes on so we throw them at you thick and fast this weekend we absolutely do but it's a delight to do so and aren't you really fortunate to have so many games to watch i know you can watch them all for free here on our youtube channel whether that be live or on demand on demand i demand it happens now Initiating cut underneath to Baez. Nearly a poach block in there, but they get past it. Tuppling. Trying to squeeze the inside through. Good avoiding action taken because it goes through to Baez. Baez now shooting to the end zone. Torre making the catch, makes it what a piece. It's a nice international flavour to this uh, to this Portuguese side. You know, players from Portugal, Spain, mentioned to the UK as well, and of course the Netherlands. So, uh, good, yeah, international flavour. Yeah, they do have a, a number of different sort of flags represented. Enjoying to see Jeff Hartline playing. He's been uh, playing for almost as long as I've been alive, Benji. It, you know, a huge amount of respect for that. Well, I mean, talk about a Frisbee CV. Played for Seattle Remix, Zurich Zuf. Clearly an international individual. Yeah, played his uh, college ball for the, uh, for the Div 3 Brain Eaters of Claremont, which is, you know, a proper ultimate Frisbee team name, isn't it? But of course, the pinnacle of his beach career has been playing with the Boracay Dragons. Woof. That one, ooh, try to get that low inside flick through. Bounces off the hands. Schiervagen couldn't catch it, so an opportunity for a break here. Going down the sideline in the layout to secure possession. Will give the first break of the game, LUC's way. Yeah, quick work of that one as well. That's sort of how we want to see, well, I say we want to see. Fans of LUC will want to see them able to turn it and quickly punch it in. Get that one-on-one -on -one isolation. They see the step and that's all they need to put that throw into space. And I think that is Catalina Santos with the score. But Rostock getting themselves G'd up on the sidelines, cheering each other on. Of course, they are used to being in this position. As we say, they haven't yet scored themselves a win. Striding towards the district pickup quickly is Ulrich. That one underneath past the flying figure of Baez. Mashevsky dumps off to that far sideline. Zemvinkel trying to get the up line cut but there's no connection there. Yeah, hopefully Internet Rockstock can... Cause they are, you know, they're throwing very much catchable passes. It's just they're not quite connecting this morning. Big plant as that reset. But looking a little bit static downfield, so they're going to have to move it around the back for now. There's a nice little yard-gaining pass. Three women in the backfield. Back now in the hands of Philippa Vargas. Beautiful break around. Joao Neves is going to go ask him to get on the bike. I don't think he's going to be in the end zone there. Yeah, I think that back trailing foot was still planted when he had possession, but he's just, just saying that the defender who sort of made a couple of yards to go and chat wasn't quite that close to him. I mean, technically, it shouldn't be a stoppage. You should just continue play, I think. But well, I good. guess because he's called the goal, at that point, everyone's stopping just to just to say, no, you're not, you're not quite there yet. So isolated on the edge of his own end zone here. 
Baez looking for a reset, finds one, and a bump on the mark potentially there on Vargas. Nauman is the player on the mark, an uncontested accepted foul there. Going to go back into Vargas's hands. Nichols is the reset. Still count rising, and that is a pick. Yeah, rather unsurprisingly, suspiciously free. Thank you very much. Using the correct terminology. You taught me well, Benji. You say things enough times, people just accept it as facts. It's great. <laughs> It's been said at least five times, so therefore it must be true. And that's a beautiful put, but Vargas unable to reel it in. Yeah, went to go with the trailing edge, the right hand, and try and scoop it up from behind. I do wonder whether she'd be a better place going with the uh, going with the left hand, trying to get that spin to take it in. But I think, in truth, the throw was always just a bit too far out in front. Rostock now don't want to play up in the shadow of their own end zone, so they're going to look to go coast to coast. But Mashevsky is never catching up to that one. Now the break opportunity here for the Portuguese. Slightly slower paced game than some we've seen so far this week. I think that's a fair fair comment, Benji. It's, you know, first game on the second morning of the tournament. Yeah, so maybe it's a bit understandable that you've not quite got so much juice in the legs, perhaps. Uh, enjoying some of the lovely late evening warmth here in the Algarve. This is another deep shot. I think this one is going to be tracked down in stride there by Vargas. Well, Vargas, oh, a little bit behind, but Neves makes the catch. I was going to make a comment sort of at the end of this point, Benji. There's a lot of poaching off of the male matching players for Enzonis Rotstock. And finally, unfortunately, we have a bit of a bad collision between two individuals on the far side of the field. Yeah, Nichols took a pretty uh, heavy landing there. Getting herself off and up and dusting herself down is always a good sign. Yeah, the sand is a more forgiving surface to fall down onto, but she seems to be putting her hand to sort of the back of the neck just to make sure she's OK. She does seem to be staying on, though. So I think it's as Baez is trying to is trying to streak deep. The player matching up against him, which could be Mashevsky, I think, is yeah just trying to catch up and then comes across the path of Nichols and. But they are doing a lot of sitting off of their players. So a violation called. Yeah, maybe moving half a second too early there. Baez. You can see he's got the speed on the ground, so I don't think he needs to. They've got Nichols poached as a reset if they want to swing it towards that far side. Well, now everyone finds their defensive assignments. Handler duking behind, but he's just got eyes for the end zone, sneaks it through, tries to hit, I think, Bias, but just ends up nearly taking Nichols' head off. That one down the sideline. Never quite in a position to bid there was Nauman. Yeah, just being shepherded as well by Vargas. And an absolute true veteran. A individual from Portimao is Vargas. This is, talk about home sand advantage earlier. No, none more so than her. This is the deep shot over the top. And uh, I think Neves got caught suckering. A, he got, went ever so slightly towards the disc. And if he'd maybe just powered straight deep, would have had a better shot at it. Still a tough play would have had to have been made. Generating turns here are LEC, but maybe not converting them with the rate that which they would like, as that one, an ambitious break shot, is too far for Machevsky. Well, this is turning into a bit of a grinder of a point now. But uh, I'd just like to shout out Juan Neves, who actually started playing in 2019. 
just before the pandemic. Not so, not not necessarily a great time to start. No, he had to wait a little bit, but that's a beautiful put into space. And Joao Neves, well, you wouldn't know he's only been playing a couple of years because that put was bang on the money to Philippa Vargas. Another LUC break at 3-1. So Nevis having picked up the sport and playing at the University of Liverpool and then coming across and playing for, look, because obviously it's Lisbon Ultimate Club, so now he lives in Lisbon. Although he's, I hear, a gun for hire in the Netherlands because he's moving to Rotterdam. Interesting. So if you'd like to acquire that are you gonna start? Are you going to start? Are you going to start a Frisbee agency? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like we could make that happen, Benji. We could, we could broker some transfers. Absolutely. Although uh, there are, unfortunately, some people playing the sport who do think it is like a FIFA transfer type deal. And if players move from uh, from their club, they are owed monies for the time and they've invested in coaching individuals. It's not how it works with an amateur sport, really, is it, Benji? Not not quite. Not at, not at this stage, certainly. Maybe we'll, Maybe we'll put some trades in. What, what can be the barter system? I mean, out here, feels like beers are probably the, probably the system of choice. On the sand, in the sun, what else would it be? Coming underneath there is tight pressure on that one, but a good catch stuck there by Schierwagen. Boss looking to try and get the reset off the line. Isolates Benzine. He's blading it towards the end zone. Pick. There might be a pick. There certainly is, Benji. Players will have a chat about it. I think one of those sort of bendy round the stack kind of deals. That's going to be accepted. Wouldn't surprise me if they uh, look for the same thing again or if they fake it and try and get him open on the break side. At that time, oh, he shows the break and then the devastating spin move back to the open side and collecting the score there is pole for 3-2. Uh, apparently, one of his signature moves is, uh, he calls it the look-up. I've also heard it called the 747 fake, where you'd be like, oh, what's that over there? <laughs> and, then, and then you just go, Nyong. technical term. The 747 fake. Interesting. Yeah, represented Germany at the uh, at the Masters level here on the Sands of Portimao at EBUC 2019. And uh, also uh, on the grass, I actually represented Germany's men's Masters out uh, that year as well. Well... I think that's possibly the uh, the reason behind your earlier comment, Benji, of the slight lower pace of this game in terms of the uh, speed across the sand for these athletes. It's just a case of, you know, who can play the chess match and retain the energy. Vargas wanted that little thread through, but it wasn't there. And now in a situation with a rising stall, gets that off well to Hartline. Heartline, nice early break to space for Pinto. Pinto, back to Tupling. Breaking around. Torre, oh, that one is macked on! And if you don't catch your tees, that is what can happen. Cleaning up the trash there. Fabio Pinto for 4-2. I mean, I hate to single out Machewski there, but... I think we've said it enough times on live streams that I'm not sure I... Yeah. Was it there to be caught? I'll have to see it again on the replay now. So a bit of blade on that one going up. Oh, he does yeah. try, to be fair. There was an attempt. All right, we'll let him off. <laughs> we, will, we will let him off because he did, he did try and catch it, to his credit. But in the end, only a bit of Mac line practice for the laying out Pinto. Well, you know, if you can't get yourself on the stat sheet by throwing the assist, you can go for the Mac assist. Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure I want credit for that one. 
No, it looked, it looked pretty good. And he did, as you say, he did try and catch it. It is a tricky one to do when there's pace on the disc because the speed with which that one was released. Coelho with the pull. Fielded by the Germans. Breaking towards the far sideline. There's Schierwagen. Again, a cheeky little blade, and I think maybe just the phantom pressure closing in there on Mittag was enough to force the uh, loss of concentration for the drop. Coelho will pick up. First pass is the reset to Oliveira. Oliveira, just a little pop off there, back to Coelho. Looking for options. Oliveira plants, works back towards the disc. That pink Euro disc. Very distinctive, shows up well on the sand and ambitious shot across the end zone. But thrower and receiver, very much not on the same page there. Yeah, there was the possibility of making that slash across the end zone, which Personally, especially with the low wind conditions, I quite favour the hammer there. It's going to be a softer throw, easier, but that's not a soft throw at all. No, that one is ripped deep and uh, in the end just stewarded out of the sideline by uh, the LUC defender, Fabio Coelho, uh, sorry, Afonso Coelho. And he wants to pick up here, but uh, everyone else is set quite deep. Or still just getting into position. Faking the underpass. Van der Valk tries to make a reset cut. Doesn't like it, so still count rising. Why not put some air underneath it? Rostock come down with this one. Quickly downfield, Zumwinkel. Here's Pole. Germans looking for their first break. Credit back to Pole. And now Zumwinkel moving the disc. At a decent rate here. Now squeezing down the sideline, and that is a superb layout from Gabriel Zumwinkel. That'll give Rostock their first break. Used to work uh, as a uh, as a seaman on uh, on various container ships, and he set sail for the end zone there. And when the wind at his back lays out full extension for the score. Well, we love to see it, as you say. And Dunnish Rostock not having got themselves a win, but haven't been completely demolished by their opponents. They've been putting up some good score lines. In fact, the best is probably their uh, performance against the Swedes, which they only lost by three points. Certainly the energy and the uh, the ambiance seems to be good, even if the results haven't gone their way. Here's the pull from Rostock. Looking to try and get the brake train rolling now. Underneath, that is a lot of pressure on that one. And uh, it does seem that there is going to be some discussion here. I think there was a, a decent amount of pressure on that left shoulder. Too much physicality. Christian Baez was the intended target. Obviously, something that, as a Brit, I never really think about, or never have to think about, is the fact that the default language of Ultimate is English, so it's nice and easy for us. But obviously, when you get players of different nationalities, Sometimes there is a little bit of a, a gap, uh, some translation required. Here, this one is going to be contested and sent back. Mithag is ready on the mark. Swinging for Vargas on the far side. Vargas. Back to 
Previous throw at that one. Oh, another hefty collision. Yeah, two players cutting into precisely the same space. It's almost like an indoorsy type isolation play with the three handlers sat at the back and the two players isolated upfield. But the, uh, in fact, it's the three female matching handlers sort of in the just flat space and allowing the male matchups to go to work upfield. But actually, the defense is doing a pretty good job of those male matching units and maybe they should just switch that up, sort of have perhaps the third hand of striking. Vardagas working very hard to uh, grind towards that line. And congratulations to her as well. She's recently become an auntie. Oh. Her sister Ines has had her first child. Well, I believe, Philip, it might be a mum already. This one towards the back of the end zone after the turnover. One pass ultimate from Rostock works and we are level at fours. Nice little comeback here from the Germans. Well, the hot intensity of the match defense eventually pays off for the Rostock side. If you want to keep an eye on what's going on elsewhere around the tournament, thankfully, we, there is a live scoring page where you can see everything that's going on. You can get in-depth stat breakdowns as well. That is live.ebucc.eu. So nice little comeback here from Enzonis Rostock. Well, it would be delightful for them if they could get their first win of the tournament on the live stream, Benji, of all places. Good place to turn up, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Showcase field here on the Praia de Rocha, Portimao. But of course, they are still trailing that one break, uh, Rostock. That three point run from Port the Portuguese side earlier. Quite a swingy game in process here. Oliveira jogs towards the disc to pick up Van der Valk. With a still count rising, surveys his options, wants to go deep. Really well boxed out by Coelho. And then the cheeky little push pass into the end zone for the hold for LUC. Yeah, nice and easy does it. That's a lot better. We've still got really tight defensive pressure. The windows that the L Lisbon team are popping, popping the disc through are pretty, pretty small. Just shows the accuracy with which they're able to attack. Look at that cool dude. When I grow up, I want to be Patrick van der Valk. <laughs> and then how do you like that? A little bit of a push pass here to Tupling for the score. Well, it works in these conditions. Yeah, often you associate beach with being relatively windy, but it is very serene and calm out there at the moment. I'm appreciative of it. In the cooler weather of the morning, we don't want too much of a chilling breeze because it is quite cool in terms of the air temperature. But by the end of the day, the sand will be very warm indeed. We were throwing around after the last matches yesterday and it is very hot underfoot. Some players actually choose to wear sand socks, not because of the sand, but just because of the pure heat as the sun starts to bake the nice powder. And a round break there to Langhoff. Sets up the isolation downfield with Nauman. Nauman to Machevsky. Jonas Petrov. Again, just about past the bidding defender. Baez loves throwing himself around on the sand and... Uh, uh, a retracted pick call. Yep, I don't think her uh, toppling was really, honestly, much marking. 
and then right through the hands at the back of the end zone. That's got a sting for Rostock. Worked it down so well, and then they've got the connection on the end zone, but they just post it right through. That cut initiating deep from the handler space. Doesn't go and then getting a little bit in the bump of a bump in the back for his troubles there, his heart line. Yeah, Macheski, very big unit. But again, just the defense being a bit too physical for my liking, Benji. Need a bit more body control. Right on that far sideline now, can they find an outlet? They do indeed in Baez. Baez remonstrating with the downfield option. Instead going into the backfield, there should be a break available here to Tupling, there is. Tupling into the centre, oh wow, just the straight up spanner there from Baez. A difficult one to do over your shoulder with both hands like that, and yep, just the clap of doom. And that is a pick with a throw to absolutely nobody. So that looks like it's going to be redeemed. Yeah, it feels like everyone stopped as just as the throw is going and kind of look of confused heads everywhere. So over half an hour gone here. 5-4 LUC lead. Well... Heartline bringing it back in. They say their fans are Homer, Bev and Fred in Boot, Montana. So hello to you if you've set your clock to catch this game. Trying to work out what time zone Montana's in. Mountain time? So that's what, seven hours behind us? It is indeed mountain daylight time. So currently it is... 20 past two in the morning. Oof. But of course, a beautiful part of the world for very different reasons than Baltimore is. Also, big shout out to Trent Simmons. Dedication to off-field spirit at the game movement. Yeah, thinking about the 10 million discs initiative that he's done. Well, it's an action replay of exactly the same throwaway that the pick brought back. A bit too much ambition there. Receivers, in truth, never really going to catch up with that one. Especially not on Sam. So Langhoff will switch it up and go and mark Hartline. Downfield, Mischewski will continue to just be everywhere with his big frame. Not for the first time this game. Kind of a slower start. Nichols trying to find options downfield. Just puts this one out into space, but too far out in front and out of that far sideline. Yeah, Bias made an interesting decision there. It was marked completely under, and that seemed to be what Macheski was trying to take away. He just sort of kept running towards him, and Macheski kept holding his buffer. Bizarre scenes. Sometimes you've got to take what the defence is giving you. That break going to have to be chased down, it is, and then the continuation finds Langhoff. With the stalk out rising, going across the pitch, and a bit of toe drag swag there for Macheski for the Germans. Evens us up again at five apiece. Indeed, but of course, trading down is Enzonis because of that early break that went to look. But I believe a timeout just got called. So as the players on the field take a bit of a breather after these highlights, so will we. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a f football. 
huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. Welcome back to EBUCC, the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships. Mixed division action for you here at the moment. LUC of Portugal, the Lisbon Ultimate Club, up against Enzonis from Rostock in Germany. And we are currently level pegging at five apiece, Benji Rees alongside Hannah Pendlebury. Kind of summary of the game so far, the Cliff Knights version, if you will. There's been very tight match defense from both sides. Generally, these two teams seem to be working each other out. I think probably I'd still edge it in favor of LUC. Their record thus far in this tournament has been better than their opponents. But Phil. there have been some bizarre things happening. I think we've got both teams are really, maybe they, you know, they didn't have time for breakfast this morning. They were up early doors to get this one started. It does feel like they haven't quite reached full gear either side. Certainly not. And we know that there's lots of Asian experience on both these sides. They can put together some pretty tasty offense. It's just a case of changing up the decisions. Still count rising, but turning and isolating the break towards the far side. Finds Coelho. Oh, Van der Volk is off to the races but throws straight into the opposition. Credit just ran through, clean interception. Can they make it count on the end zone line? Force desperately trying to dissuade the end zone shot, does just enough to force the reset. Can they find a red zone stand? Blading over the top. I love that one, taking advantage of the fact that that defender's not seeing it too late to get it over the top. And for the first time since the first point of the game, Enzonis Rostock have taken the lead. They've come all the way back from a couple of points down to lead 6-5. Well, I talked about decision-making. <laughs> that was a bizarre one. Just literally threw straight into the defender that was right there. I think it's just that I really would like to throw a swing right now. And I mean, probably a little bit of a slowdown there from Alfonso Coelho, but yeah, a bizarre one and a gift given to Enzonis. Who knows? They could turn that one into a win. Well, when you're kind of things haven't been going your way on the pitch, sometimes, you know, you need those little breaks to go your way in order to try and arrest that momentum. And to be fair, Enzonis have been playing, I say, very intense match defense. They have been on the shoulder of their opponents the whole time. I'd say probably they are a, a slightly younger team. They've got a couple of individuals who only started playing within the last year. LUC with the stall count rising, putting a bit of air underneath it, and that is well reeled in. Kareen Tupling is looking for her other half. Matthew didn't like it, so instead leading Pinto towards the back of the end zone. That is much cleaner there from the Portuguese side to put us at sixes. Well, leading the seven-year veteran, Fabio Pinto, originally from Cascais, if I pronounced that correctly. Probably haven't, but there you go. We try. But nearly the honey pass, as you say, Matthew Tupling, originally from Penrith, UK, came across with Corin. Penrith in Scotland, right? It's one of those places where it's either Scotland or Cornwall. <laughs> there's, okay, a weird, we'll, there's a weird we'll crossover. I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely take your point. And uh, to be fair, fan, UK Ultimate fans might know Corinne by her maiden name, which was uh, Doff. But you know what? It's in neither. Penrith is a town in Cumbria's east. I oh, know. 
Yeah, Cumbria's East Eden Valley in England. Oh, yes, I, did. I should have known that. Of Penrith Castle fame. So it's, it's not too far from the north border for the Scots. It's actually uh, sort of sandwiched between Keswick and the North Pennines area of national beauty. So in our own area of natural beauty here at the moment, Portimao on the Pride of Russia. This one put deep. Layout required and superbly done again. Rostock laying out for the score this time. Just trying to get a spy of the jersey number. It Let's have a look at it again on the replay. Just a nice little dish off here. That leading pass into the end zone. Superb layout grab there for the score. On grass, we oftentimes will talk about the power position that you get when you make S upline strike as a handler. But I feel like the much more useful power position on beach is that flowing cross field swinging power position where you don't have all the energy of having to absolutely gun it up the sideline and then especially with the you know unpredictable uneven surface of beach but that swing nice swing across to the break side and then bosh straight into the end zone a lovely connection and this is more like it for rostock i think it was sabrina mittag with the layout score there joao neves oh that one was a little bit behind and offline Another short field opportunity here for Rostock. Yeah, they're getting a lot of gifts right now. Lady Luck favouring the Germans. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. That's what the Trojans always said. That one was a hell of a bid, but had he got there, I think he might have landed out of the sideline anyway. Still love the endeavour and the hustle. Tappling picks up and swings into the centre. There's the continuation to Philippa Vargas. Vargas putting a bit of air underneath it, hitting Neves in stride. There's a reset available of Jeff Hartline. Hartline finds Neves, rolling the disc around there to make it sevens. Well, a little bit of buried treasure on the far side of the end zone emerges. And after the gift that was thrown away by Anzonis, we level ourselves back up. It seems like this Rostock club are uh, finding a bit more form. This does happen, especially if you, you know, don't get that much pitch time on the beach, is that there is that adjustment in the first few games where you find your range, you get those connections sorted down again. You do know where Rostock is? It's on the north coast, right? Yeah, yeah, so it does have beach. Yes. So they, I think they train on beach a fair amount. Maybe it's the maybe it's the step up into tournament intensity then, perhaps. Probably. It's also the idea of, you know, it is beach is always a difficult surface, I think, even when you play on it a lot just because of the idea of there aren't that many beach championships and beach tournaments to play. Certainly this time of year, there are a good smattering of them. I think the other thing as well is that one of the things that you associate with beach is quite variable conditions, I think, as well. That's true. I'm, I'm not to uh, put any disparity on to Rostock as a location. I'm sure it's absolutely lovely. I have some friends that are from that particular area, but uh, I'm quite glad to be in Portimao rather than on the north coast of Germany. Me too. Faking the deep look with that blade. Instead, squirreling his way free in the handler space is Langhoff. Zumwinkel, he was cranking it up for the deep one, but then just hid it away for a bit. So the break across the pitch. Langhoff to the end zone, finds Zumwinkel for 8-7. Well, the engine is running and they're just starting to work through the gears now, our Rostock. So imagine the cap will probably go on during this point. That's a, that, that's a really good point, Benji. This one is sort of just, you know, we did talk about the pace being slightly lower, but 
Universe point finish would be pretty marvellous. And it, this is the thing with Beach, with the shorter games, sometimes it does sneak up on you a little bit, so you need to make sure that you're switched on and on the ball. Well, disc, but you know what I mean. No, you can be on the ball, juggling some discs, sort of, you know, like a little circus seal. I tell you, I had a friend who tried out to, to join a circus. How'd it go? Well, he said, you know, oh, I want to do like bird impressions, you know, be like a good, because he's got a very good mimic. And the, the ringmaster said, no, I'm sorry, we've already got someone who did that. And he was, and so my mate looked disconsolate as he flew out of the tent. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that one, isn't it? High quality commentary content. Holding that flick out there and finding it to Vargas. It's a little bit cluttered in that reset space. But you get it back to Toro. And this one air underneath it. Oh, this should be picked off. It is by Paul. Little shimmy of the shoulders. Underneath to Ulrich. Back to Paul. You can see why he's the stats leader for Enzonis so far. And then blading towards the end zone. Spectacular high grab there by uh, Lukas Machewski. So that'll be a 9-7, game to 10, I believe. After, you know, digging themselves a hole with 3-1 down early in this game. Full credit to the way Rostock have fired back. Absolutely, they've cleaned it up and put some pressure on. I really didn't like the clogging of the space in front of the disc from the handler moving from behind the set of three. It just meant that that eventual grind down the sideline for the teammate upfield wasn't able to be hit at all because just too many players clustered into the space and we've had some collisions already twice on this field, quite big ones. So a timeout being called, I imagine probably by Lisbon and we're gonna take a brief break ourselves. We'll be back after these. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate Strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. That was called Electric, become a member. Welcome back to the party in Portimao, the European Beach Ultimate Club Championships. Mixed division action here, Enzonis Rostock, one point away from their first victory of the tournament here, up 9-7 on LUC of Portugal in a game to 10. The pull from Rostock is gonna land probably about the brick mark. Well, it's all been about tight match pressure and they're sticking with it. Slight poach into the lane, toppling onto the races. And Van der Valk sees that. He's going for it and it is agonizingly inches away. Yeah, did have to put it high and out on that shoulder because the defensive pressure was there from Hannes and Winkel. Brought to the front line of the end zone. That one low, zippy caught. Boss opens up the arm. This might invite a little bit of defense and nipping in front there to get the block. Oh, that, I think that is the whistle for uh, time being over, maybe. Might have started a little bit late. And another overshot from Van der Valk over the arm of Corinne Tupling. 
those two haven't got that chemistry down this game. Credit, looking deep, rolling his wrist across it into the end zone. Benson has his man all at sea, so that'll be 10-7, and I think game to 11. Yeah, just getting it confirmed on the sidelines. Well, this, if you are Lisbon, is where you're required to dig very deep indeed. I, I mean, they could potentially surmount the comeback. But at the moment, Anzonis Rostock have all cylinders firing. And they're able to really pull the pressure. Yeah, from from being six all and then seven all first point after half. It's three on the bounce now for Enzonis Rostock. And it really is about them effectively using their height, I think. It's those matchups downfield. There was a fantastic D that came out of well, I'm trying to think who it was. They got the D on one of the big units for Rostock in that last point, but uh Unable to make anything of it, and that's going to sail right out of bounds and give a nice starting position for Look. So I'm making advantage of the hotel breakfasts. Torre will bring it to the brick. And Catarina Santos singing on the sideline to G up her teammates. First pass swings towards the far side. Handler clears through and gets the upline pass. Here's Vargas. That is ominously open. I think it was because the uh, the switch was there. Jonas Petrau. But a pick way earlier. It's going to bring it back. On the far sideline, still for LUC. Can they find a way to break it off? There's one and then a continuation around. Trying to keep the still count low. Now they're forced to hold the disc a little bit. Matt Tupling lays out, makes the catch, goes back central. I think we're wanting a bit more movement and motion going on downfield. Takes the reset, back to Tupling. And here's one that's just going to sail underneath the mark and pop up ever so invitingly for Felipe Vargas in the end zone. 8-10. Can Lutz, Lutz, Luke get their first, not even their first, can they get three points in a row to win this game? Well, they've done it before. It all starts with the hold. And taking the scoreline from one apiece to 3-1 lead at the beginning of the game... Might get a mirror image here, perhaps. But that was much better stuff from, look, they just were happy to take the negative yards, move themselves around, and the shot for Vargas at the end. It's nice to see the uh, matching teammates giving the space in that end zone. Two male matching, three female matching players this point for each side. But can Enzonis Rostock grab their first win of the tournament and keep the dream of a pre-quarter final for the 9-16 alive? Torre going with that flick to get the point underway. Trying to stop that OI backhand. Oh, it is really floaty, but brilliantly ripped down. And going for it all in one. Can they get it? Enzo and his Rostock have their first win of the championships. 11-8 over LUC, the Lisbon Ultimate Club of Portugal. Well, it was extremely well fought in the end, that second half for Adonis Rostock. They've managed to turn the screws and figure out exactly how to deny the Portuguese side all of the options they wanted most, but well played.
Yeah, a good victory here for Rostock. Always nice to get that first one on the board. There'll be three-way tie shenanigans at the bottom of the pool to work out who's going into those middle pre-quarters and who's going straight into the bottom bracket. We're moving to the Open Division next up. Uh, our first Open game of the day, Flying Angels Burn of Switzerland up against Murcia Lagos of Spain. And we look forward for you joining us for that one in a couple of minutes' time. For Hannah Pendlebury and all of our OG TV crew, Benji Reese saying we'll see you on the other side.